Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Lannis93 in the three-minute pool on chess.com. It's another Clock as a Weapon video. Been a while since I played one of these because I had that live extended session, which I recorded probably a couple weeks ago now on Twitch. But we are back at it. It is Tuesday. I've got some tea. I'm playing Lennis 93 from... What country is that? Cuba. Yeah, Cuba. Okay, Knight C4. Let's play A4. Stop any B5 business. And I think I'm going to go for... Let's go Knight E1 looking for F4. Maybe he'll play Knight G6 against this. No, he plays Bishop E6. Okay, F4, F5 on the way. Hope you guys are all doing well. Okay, he just defends. Decisions. If I take, he might take c4, but I think I can insert a capture on f6 if he does, so I like this. He has options which way he wants to take back on e5. He takes the bishop. Intriguing. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's take him. Keep it simple. So if knight takes... I'd say probably knight f3, or maybe b3. b3 also looks reasonable. He has the stronghold on e5. Ah, there's also bishop h3 ideas. I, I remember this idea. Bishop h3, and if bishop takes h3, queen h5 check as a way to try to trade the light square bishops, because my light square bishop is kind of bad. So, yeah, I'm going to use this trick. I remember seeing this in a book one time. I think Mastering Chess Strategy by Johann Helston. So just a good way to try to swap here. And he's looking for a swap as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll play this queenless middle game. I'm going to play b3 next move. Just to try to discourage this move. In the long term, he might like to get b5 in, but I can try to make that difficult for him. If he plays a6, I'll play a5. Okay, so he plays h4. Makes sense. Let's play h3 so I can meet h4 with g4. For the moment, my pieces are unimpressively placed on the back rank, but they're going to get in the action, so knight f4. Yeah, I think he's going to go for this to try to discourage me from playing the a5 move. All right, so let's make sure we counterattack now. I might even come to d5. Okay, so he goes back there. Let's play king g2. Looks helpful. So if he plays b5, I can swap, take a8, take h5. That should be good for me. Plays h4. Okay. Mm hmm. Hmm, hmm. I'm going to keep it closed for now on this wing. Now he's inviting knight h5. That move just seems like it could win a pawn, so I'm going to do it. I wonder if he'll sack the exchange now. He does. And king there. Okay, interesting approach by my opponent. So he's maybe looking to play rook h8 and just win the pawn. I see. Okay, so I may want to break somewhere. Let's play bishop d2 to start. I may want to break somewhere. I wonder if he'll play a5. Yeah, he does. a5 looks like a smart strategy. Trying to keep things closed as much as possible. Okay, I'm going to send my king over to e2. And look to play c3 somewhere. I think that's about the only active thing I can do. Although, maybe now I can double up. Let's double up and attack that pawn on f6 and see what he does. Play rook h6, okay. Now I'm just going to wait for a moment. This position may be dynamically balanced. And he has the knight pair and potential to break through, but trying to break through could be risky for him. So I'm going to wait. Just bide my time. Wow, he actually pushes. So now, okay, yeah, if he takes up the rook, that would have been a problem. Let's come over here now. I'm down on the clock a bit, but... Am I going to win one of these pawns? Hmm. Let's try to come here, win this guy. I think I should try to take care of that before it gets too dangerous. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's take him. I'm guessing he's going knight d4. Let's go back with the rook. Complicated business here. Maybe c3 next? Not sure. Let's try it. I'm letting him take here, but his knight is nearly trapped in this position. Uh, but I'm going to try to approach with my king. Okay. Um, 
Let's give a check here. Really got to pick up the pace now. Get the rooks active. Start creating some threats. Rook b5 or rook takes f6. Or rook f5, I should say, or rook takes f6. Still looks nice for me, but anything can happen with 30 seconds each. Hmm. Let's see why I can't take. Okay. Let's take. And check. And he's going to be mated here. All right. Mate in the center of the board. I like it. Ooh, sharp game there at the end. Yeah, he had the knight, so in blitz, always tough to combat the knight. I think he might have rushed g4. I would have tried to prepare that if I were him. I think he should be better, even though I was saying the position may be dynamically balanced. But in a blitz situation, I, I would definitely take black here with the two knights and an extra pawn. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, only one extra pawn, but... Basically, I have no way of breaking through in this position as long as black guards f6. So I think g4 warranted some further preparation. All right, I'll take it. And game number two. Let's play e4 in this one again against Gogolev Artemy. Russian IM. Nice to be back in the saddle. Haven't played a whole lot lately. Been a busy last few days. Not sure my opponent is here. Hopefully they are. Otherwise, I'm going to have to abort this game. Yeah, I'm just going to abort. Looks like the opponent's not there. Let's get back in. Anything I wanted to say about that last game while we're waiting for an opponent, so let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure that bishop h3 idea led to a whole lot. So the reason why black played b6 as opposed to a6 and then b5 is if a6 first, then I can play a5 and take on Passant if black plays b5. So that's why my opponent inserted this b6 move, then played a6, then b5. So kind of step by step trying to prepare the b5 advance. I'm trying to think if there was some better way I could have played this. I mean, g5 was a pretty committal decision by black and then sacrificing the exchange, but it makes a lot of sense. I don't see a way I can break open the queen side after black does that. It wasn't the easiest thing in the world to do. Okay, Latin American meme is next. Let's play a Sicilian. Okay, I'll play a6 against knight c3. I've played this variation before. Uh, how do I want to play this? Let's play b4 and go for d5 think is a good way to combat this all right and let's play bishop e7 I'll play knight c6 white's going to keep the tension for now I'm always tempted to play h5 in these positions so i'm going to do that maybe develop the knight through h6 also of course hinting at the idea of h4 Okay, so white plays h3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's play knight h6. So if ever e5 is played, my knight can jump into f5. I block my rook from defending h5, but I don't think that's too relevant here. Ooh, and white's going to allow me in. Threatening knight e3, and white missed that, looks like. Also, I could pick up c2 if I want. Uh, do I take c2 and then pivot back with the knight or just go after the exchange? Probably just win the exchange. Knight g4 is another consideration, but nah, let's just take the exchange. Okay, maybe knight d4 now. Yeah, I'm liking knight d4. Let's get this bishop active. If the pawns get doubled, I'm going to have some convenient pressure down the c file. Okay, queen there. Maybe rook c8 now. Let's do that. Even though white's attacking d4 twice, c2 does hang in the end. So queen over. Okay, bishop e3. 
So now I could take or play knight f5. Knight f5 may be followed by d4. Uh, take also looks fine. Let's just take and play queen d7, looking for d4. This bishop protected. Also, c4 is an idea if I want to press forward on the queen side. There have been no pawn exchanges, so that doesn't bode well for my rooks at the moment, but they will get active. Okay, and white's allowing a capture. I feel like I should take, so let's do that. Uh, maybe g6. g6 or rook c4, or queen b5 looks nice and active. Let's do that. Maybe hinting at bishop c5 is an idea. Let's play g6 first, though. Stop any f5 business. Not doing terribly on the clock, although my opponent is ahead. C3. Hmm, surprising. Let's take that. Takes with the pawn. Okay, I'm going to go bishop c5. There's no rook b1 to worry about. If a4, I can play queen c6, queen b6, maybe queen b3 even. Queen b3, bishop d1, though. I'm not sure I like that. Let's play... Queen b6. And I'm even going to go queen a7. Keep keep some pressure on d4. I may still castle short, by the way. Have not ruled that out yet. Um, let's do it now. And I wonder if white's going to play rook g1 and start trying to attack me over here. It is possible. Or just g4. Okay. Let's keep things closed. I don't want that knight coming in. Might play g5. Ooh, he's going to go for the gusto here. He's swinging for the fences. Okay. Well, let's take to start. Just going to try to double up the rooks. Definitely got to watch a pawn coming here and then the queen coming in h6, though. That's going to be something I need to avoid. But first, let's get the rooks doubled. I feel like that's a mandatory part of any sort of play I'm going to get here. Okay, so he can't move the knight so easily yet, although knight c4 could be a thing in the future. Let's start working this in for now. I might, if he plays f6, I might want to start evacuating my king. That may not be a bad decision. I'm going to do it. Yeah, just send the king over here. I wonder if bishop d1 to a4 is a concern, but okay, I'm going to put the king on d8. Just get it over. Okay, keep running. Um, let's go here. Rearrange it. Rearrangement of the, of the pieces here. Okay. Let's defend. He's getting his way in here. Still sharp, though. I'm going to try to play rook c3 next, I think. Hmm. Just going to do that. Okay. Got to go for something here. I know I allow queen e7 and him go and take my bishop. Whoa, he blundered his queen. <laughs> queen d7. Okay, that's not going to be working for him, I don't think. Check, and this is mate. Ooh, <laughs> that was a complicated ending right there. Yikes, that h-pawn running. I think that should be winning for him because I didn't see a way I could land a threat against his king, but he just blundered his queen. Yeah, he must have meant to play queen e7 here. Queen e7, and then he can pick up my pawns with check. So I'm sure I'm losing. Yeah, it kind of ran out of gas. I wonder, in hindsight, castling short might have been bad. That might have given him too much. I probably should have done something about the tension in the center earlier. Maybe I got too fancy uh, with queen a7 and delaying the exchange on d4. Probably should have captured right away. But okay, let's chalk that up. Get back in there. Fun game.
Yes, I agree with chess.com. That was a real battle. Carl Seng is next. Let's play another Sicilian. Play a classical. Let's see if he plays bishop g5, which is the Richter Rouser. No, knight takes c6. Okay, this variation I don't know about for him. Let's play a dragon style formation. Okay, it's castle. I always feel like this should benefit black. Quick e5. Okay, that pawn seems like it should be lost. Let's take, and I'm going to go knight g4 next. There's also a queen e5 check, but I think I like this. A uh, queen d4 check, rather. But I think I like this better, because I can threaten to take with the knight, and I'm still threatening this. Yeah, see, now I give a check, and I win the exchange. Could take e5 even here. Take e5, he has knight e2, perhaps. Okay, kind of like that other game, I'm just going to bank the exchange. Not think about it too much. He's going to play bishop g3. And now queen d4, perhaps. Keep this threat alive. Here I have bishop g4 with tempo. Maybe rook b8, although I am on the same diagonal as this dark square bishop. He offers a trade. Okay, I shouldn't say no to that. And yeah, I'm thinking rook b8. Don't think I'm that concerned about the pawn on c6. This just looks good to me. Okay. Um, let's go here. So if he takes it, I go here. And if he moves that, I have uh, rook takes c3. He does have knight d5 here, but I think I can take, take, and take c2. Should be good. There's also maybe even just king f8 in this position. King f8 or bishop f8, how does he defend? It's a very rickety position with his bishop needing to defend the knight. I'm going to pause for a second because I can afford to. I think bishop f8 is fine. Yeah. Too many problems here. That's going to be a piece. I think king f8 was basically the same thing. The only thing was king f8, bishop h4, he'd be threatening to take e7 with check. He could still play bishop h4 here, but it'll be comfortably winning for me. Okay, so he resigns. So three for three. Let's keep going here. Two more games. So those of you who are new to the Sicilian or the open Sicilian, I would not recommend playing knight takes c6 in those situations. Uh, my opponent, you know, he was a good player, but... I, I don't see the purpose of capturing there immediately. So you're just strengthening Black's pawn center. It's generally not a good idea. So yeah, this is the Richter Rouser variation. This is one of the main lines. Uh, F3, very early F3. Okay, how do I want to play against this? Maybe Bishop E7 or H6 first? Let's play H6 first and see how he reacts. I might go back to E3. Okay, he does. Now let's play this. Okay, so we're going to get an English attack style position. Um, hmm. Been a while since I played these formations. Let's play b5. These lead to really interesting positions. Okay, b4 followed by d5 is one idea. Knight d7. I'm going to play knight d7. There's some prophylaxis against g5. And let's try to deny his knight this square. Yeah, I must confess, I don't feel like I play these positions that well. But I'm going to do my best. The knight's coming to f5. Makes sense. Um, I'll try to deny that. So my bishop's defending d6. It's going to be a little hard to coordinate, though. I don't know about g6, but I, I kind of felt like I had to play that. But yeah, my bishop is needed to cover both of these points. Okay, h4. I could play bishop e7. Although I may be asking for trouble there. Rook c8 looks normal. Probably rook c8. Oh, but he's going to play h5 and force his knight in. Okay, so think, John. What do you want to do? Knight b6, maybe? Let's play knight b6. At least try to create a threat. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm in big strategic trouble here. I'm going to play knight c4. Trade here. He might just take h6. 
but I felt like I had to sacrifice something there. Uh, maybe I can throw in c3 to mess him up in this position. That would be interesting. c3, he takes with the queen. I take h6 check. He takes, he takes c6 at the end. That may be bad for me somehow, but I kind of feel like I need to play something like that. Or I can play rook takes h6 first. Just pausing for a moment. Now I'm going to try it. Let's try to confuse him. I don't like the way this game is trending on the board and also on the clock, so try to make him make a tough decision. I mean, queen takes c3 may be good here is the thing. It's probably best. Go after this bishop. But I do get to defend d6 at the end of the line. That's important. Okay, so I think he's going to take here. And he's going to take c6. I'll play king e7. He can check me on b7. I play king f8. If I was losing d6, this would be big trouble, I think. Or if his knight was within striking distance of d5. But as played, maybe I can hold this. His rook takes d6 here, but... Again, if the knight is a ways away from the action, there's chances to uh, complicate still for me. He might even want to just play knight e2 here. Hmm, okay. I'm not going to worry about too many pawns in this position. I'm just going to try to activate. Let him take d6 if he wants. Okay, what about rook in? Let's go for it. Attack c2. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for tactics here. I'm not really seeing anything. Um, I'm going to play the king back to e7. Just really wasn't seeing anything there. Okay, block. He'll probably centralize queen d5. Oh, don't go there, John. You're going to get mated. Hmm. Sharp stuff here, guys. I'm going to look for a trade. I don't know about trading, but uh, I see the clock is actually going in my favor now. So maybe it's a decent option. Let's try to stop queen g8. I don't want him sneaking in anywhere. Okay. Uh, queen e6 is maybe a move I should consider. I'll play it. He probably doesn't want to trade queens at this point. Okay, now I'm hitting b2. If b3, I can take it. I can take this. Okay. Um, let's just go back. Keep it simple. And further keep it simple here. He really needs that knight involved, but it's tough. He's just throwing his pieces at me now. I'm on c3. Yeah. If he defends it, I have rook takes c3 and then discoveries. That's a little last-ditch attempt, but all right. So I survived. A couple games now where I've been under big pressure and survived. So, yeah, this one here. And also against Latin American meme. So very interesting, complicated game. Yeah, I do not think the opening went well for me. But it's it's so important to find moves like C3 and be purposeful about trying to generate counterplay when the game is not trending in your favor. I mean, this goes for Blitz especially, but even in your long time control games. If I were to just trade down here, swap on H6, or agree to play the position down a pawn with no real complication chances I think I'm done for but at least this way I mean my king was open I had to defend but I was able to create threats ultimately against white's king and keep it complicated and it paid off all right last game of the session coming up guys yeah that was a fun one I really think white should get that knight involved somewhere like I think right here even knight e2 Try to send it around to d5, because if the knight just sits on g3, and I have this pawn on g6, it's never going to be able to come up here with any sort of real effect, unless he's playing it as a sacrifice. So he really needs that knight within striking distance of the d5 square.
Okay, the Griddle Cafe. Let's play Slav. Okay, um, let's play semi slot actually. And he plays one of the sharper lines, bishop g5. Play the Cambridge Springs, queen a5. Knight d2 and c takes d5 are the main moves here. Been a while since I looked at this theory, but I'll do my best. Um... How do I want to play this? Is c5? I think c5 is playable. Let's do it. So trying to create some confusion in the center. Uh, knight takes d5 or... Let's do pawn takes. We'll keep a little bit more tension. Is knight b3? Okay. Bishop there. Mm. Okay, let's go king f8. Threatening to take and then take his bishop. So the bishop comes back. Could play c4. Let's do that. c4, maybe followed by g6 and bishop f5, if possible. Look for this idea. I like the fact that c4 is also defending b3, so he can't put his knight there. Nice little square for my king to go to on g7. This reminds me of a Rogozin. Similar looking pawn structure. Pawns here and here against this. Mm, okay, so he wants e4 if I play bishop f5. Fair enough. I'm looking for tactics that may punish him, but I don't see it, so let's just play a simple move. Yeah, e4. Um, let's just develop and defend d5. He could try to go after c4, but I don't feel like he's quite ready to do that. Let's. Maybe I should attack this pawn on d4. That looks annoying for him to defend. And indeed, he's just going to give it to me. Okay, let's take. Okay, this seems to be clarifying nicely for me. I'm threatening knight e3 with a fork, also hitting c3 multiple times. Okay, so he takes there. I can win a pawn. Um, yeah, let's part with the, the bishop pair. Is he going to throw in rook d1 first? Maybe. Rook d1, I'll just play queen f6, I suppose. Uh, and then if he takes, I even have b5 as an option, followed by knight e3, so he probably shouldn't play that. He should probably just take right away, but he's burning time. I'm trying to figure out the best way to play this. Okay. So now when he takes, I think b5 is a pretty good option here. Just scanning to see what he has, but I don't see it. I don't have to go after c3. I can... Go for knight e3 instead. I'd rather have the exchange. It's been a mini theme for this session. Been winning the exchange a few different times. Okay, so knight takes c3 is another option, but not as thrilled about that. c3 will still be weak. I gotta watch the squares around my king, especially if his knight pivots to e4. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, which way to take? I think I'm gonna take this way. Mm hmm. Let's go. Let's go here. Knight e4, queen e5. So if f4, I can take. Okay, now here I'm thinking maybe king g8 or even king h8. Probably king h8. That seems better. So that if he plays f4, I can do this. I want to just prevent him from. Uh, hurting me on that long diagonal. Now I'm threatening bishop c4. He got one point of material back, but the time situation is definitely in my favor now. Um, let's play h6. Just stop knight g5 business. Let's go bishop here. Try to be tricky. Threaten rook takes b1. Definitely going to keep the tension if I can versus playing something like bishop takes e4, queen takes e4 when he's going to play f5 and attack me or maybe win f7. 
Okay, yeah, he went passive here. Let's take that. And let's go queen here. Keep attacking him. He basically can't ever trade now anything. Okay, let's take. And I can go take here. He has one check, but that's it. Go king f7, guard the f7 pawn. And I think that's going to be over. Hitting his knight. Threatening rook a1, other stuff. Uh, yeah, rook a1's good here. And he lost on time. Okay, so take down a strong opponent here at the end. 27-66. So, I scored 5 out of 5 this session. I feel pretty good about that. I went into this session feeling a, a little bit tired. It's been um, hectic last 24 hours, I'd say. All good stuff, but just staying busy. Wasn't sure how I'd perform, but yeah, I think I did pretty well. I'm proud of the way that I, I sought counterplay, especially in this game here against a no, 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 because uh, I was in very big trouble after he had played h5. So fun session. Clock as a weapon. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And I will be back again soon with another video. Let me know if you guys have any questions about anything that happened in these games. So appreciate you guys watching as always. All right. Bye, guys.